Hello, welcome to the video on compound interest. And I always enjoy teaching this particular topic because it's easy to answer the question that you always get as a math teacher, and that is, when am I ever going to use this in real life? Why do I have to know this? I'm, I'll never use this when I grow up. And uh, instead of arguing about uh, the value of learning various math topics, of course, I'm going to tell you that you want to learn all those topics just for the um, simple fact that you're practicing your critical thinking and problem solving skills. In this particular lesson, though, in mathematics compound interest, it has direct relevance to um, so many different issues that are going to touch your life, and that's namely money. Okay, so anything that has to deal with money is probably going to have to is probably going to deal with interest, and more than likely, it's going to deal with compound interest. So I would definitely encourage you to pay attention. So with all that said, let's take a look at our objectives. I want to go ahead and just give you a basic uh, description of um, investing. Okay, we'll talk about some simple concepts and vocabulary terms of investing. Then I want to go ahead and illustrate compound interest and simple interest. And I'll tell you right now, compound, compound interest is much better. And then I'm going to show you um, and show you how to apply the compound interest formula. So let's go ahead and just review the concept of investing. So if I asked you what is investing, you could give me this answer and it would be totally great. It would say, well, it's money making money. And that is exactly what investing is. It's the process of of money in some account earning money. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, how this works in a basic sense. So let's suppose you earn a thousand dollars in a summer job and you want to save that money. Well, you could save it in, in an old-fashioned way, and that is to maybe put it underneath your bed. Okay, so one year later, all right, you would go underneath your bed and you'd check on your money and hopefully your younger brother or sister or somebody didn't take it and guess what you should have a thousand dollars there so you started off a thousand dollars and you ended it with a thousand dollars however there's a better way of saving money okay and that is called investing so now we can take this a thousand dollars and we can go to a financial institution like a bank and these banks have these different type of savings accounts and the bank will say hey look let us hold your money. We'll go ahead and save your money for you. And for the privilege of doing that, we're going to pay you. We're going to pay you for you letting us hold your money. Okay. And that payment is called interest. Okay. And the interest is going to always, almost always be some percentage of the amount you put in. So the bank will say, maybe in this example, we're going to pay 6% of the money you decide to invest with us. So at the end of one year, you come back, you have $1,000 plus 6% of that $1,000 you put in. And 6% of 1000 is $60. So at the end of one year, you have $1,060. So you can see here that it's a much better deal to go to a bank and invest. Now, some simple um, vocabulary terms that you need to be familiar with is the money that you start off or you initially put in a bank is called the principal, okay? And then you have interest, which I described to you is the payment the bank or the financial institution is going to pay you, and it's often described as a percent, okay, or an annual percentage rate, okay? These are terms that describe or um, your interest and then you have your final amount that you've earned okay sometimes people call this your return on your investment and by the way this sixty dollars here six percent of a thousand dollars sometimes that's also called yield all right so there's a ton of different financial terms but these are the basics so let's take a look at the two most common type of interest situations and those are compound and simple interest I want you to right now just understand that compound interest makes money grow a lot faster than simple interest okay so you when given the choice you always want to go with the compound interest account all right um, people will say that hey compound interest is true 
makes money grow exponentially. So you want to remember that term exponentially means that something grows very fast over a period of time. And there's a little bit more technical definition of it, but I just want you to um, get a sense of that right now. Okay, so let's take a look at the difference of, of uh, compound and simple interest. So let's suppose you go to a bank and the first bank says, I'm gonna pay you 5% simple interest on your principal. Okay, so here you invest about, oh, excuse me, $100 that's a principal, the interest rate is 5% and it's simple interest rate. So how does this work? Well, after one year, and this percentage rate, by the way, would be an annual percentage, meaning that the bank will give you 5% after, one, after holding your money for one year. Well, after one year, you would have earned, a th oh, excuse me, $100 plus 5% of $100, which is another $5. So in total, after one year you have 105 okay so that's good and that's like all right well you know that's not bad at least it's more than a hundred dollars so what about year two this is your first year your second year now here's what simple how simple interest works simple interest says hey look we're going to give you your current account balance which is your 105 plus we'll give you another five percent on your initial deposit, your principal amount. So you get 105 plus another $5. Now this is the difference between simple and compound interest, okay? Um, and I'm gonna show you here in just a second. So your total amount after year two is 110, okay? Now there's a much better way of investing, okay? And that is called compound interest. Now let's see how that works. So compound interest, let's suppose, the same bank says, hey, look, we're gonna, you can invest our, your $100 with this, but 5% compounded, all right, annually. That would be the interest rate. So let's see how that works. So the first year, first year you would get $5, okay? You would get 5%, which is $5 on your money. Okay, so there's no difference in the first year. You get 105. All right, so you're saying, well, okay, what's the big difference here? I don't see the real value. Both earn 5% on your initial amount. Your initial amount is your principal, remember, okay? However, the difference starts in year two. In year two, with simple interest, that 5% is only go is gonna apply always on the principal amount. Well, compound interest says, look, for year two, we're gonna give you 5%, not of your original principal, rather, we're going to give it to you on what you earned after your first year. So now we're gonna give you 5% of 105, okay? So now, year two, you have $105, okay, already going into year two, plus you're gonna earn 5% on 105, okay? So let's see what that is, 5% of 105, so you want to go 0 0.05 times 105 is 525, 525. So the total in year two will be 525 plus your 105 is 110, 25. So you're saying, well, look, it's really not much of a difference here. Okay, compound interest uh, after year two, I had 110 dollars and 25 cents it's only 25 cents more because in year two with simple interest it's it's only 110 dollars but here is a major major misconception this compound interest this will start taking off when you go into year three year four and year five etc if you keep doing this for let's say 20 years there will be a dramatic a significant difference between how much money you were earned okay using compound interest than simple interest okay so compound interest a much 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 better, better way to go all right and we say money grows exponentially using compound interest okay so let's talk about compound interest specifically now and i'm going to give you the formula and we'll do a simple example and of course we'll do more in the example sets we'll practice how to uh 
uh, solve various word problems. But here's a compound interest formula. You can see here, I have the variables and what they mean. We have the amount that you will earn, the total amount of your investment, okay, equals the principal, which is your starting amount, times one plus the annual interest rate. And this right here, this R, the annual interest rate has to be expressed as a decimal. So for example, 6% as a decimal is 0 0.06, all right? So here in this particular example, you'll see it would be one plus R or one plus your 6%, but we don't write this as a percentage, we write it as a decimal. So it's gonna be one, point, one plus 0 0.06. All right, and you'll see this here. We're going to do an example in just a second. So R is your interest rate as a decimal, as we talked about, and T is the number of years you decide to leave the money in a particular savings account. Okay, it's the number of years of your investment. Okay, and it has to be expressed in years. Okay, so if you decide to invest for only six months, okay, what's six months as a year? Well, that's one half of a year, so that's what your T amount would be. Okay, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and show you an example of how compound interest works. So let's suppose you have a principal, your starting amount. Well, let's suppose that thousand dollars again. Okay, and you're going to go to a particular bank in town, and they're going to give you five percent uh, compounded interest. All right, and you want to invest for four years. So T would be four, R would be five, and your principal is $1,000. So what will be the total amount you will earn? All right, so we have to go and use a formula. So it's going to be A equals the principal. Let's just write the formula here. Principal times one plus R to the T power. Okay, that's the formula. So it's going to be A equals 1,000 times 1 plus the interest rate. And the interest rate is 5%. But 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05. So that's what we have to plug in here, 0 0.05. And T is the number of years we're going to invest. In this case, it's going to be four years. So we're going to put a four right up here. All right, so this is now what we have to figure out. And I can tell you right now, I'm going to go ahead and put a big red flag caution sign where students mess up is not so much in setting up the problem they mess up by actually calculating doing the, um, the actual numeric calculations to this uh, expression because they forget the order of operations okay what you have to do first here and you always do this is you have to add what's inside the parentheses remember PEMDAS let's just review this real quick PEMDAS Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, from left to right. So this is where students, like I said, will mess up. I'll show you where they uh, most often go uh, wrong here. So you have to do what's inside the parentheses first. So we have to add. So it's 1,000, 1 plus 0.05, and we get 1.05 to the fourth power. Now here is where a lot of students, not every student, but a lot of students seem to go wrong. They multiply... 1,000 times point, uh, 1.05, and then they take that to the fourth power. That is incorrect, incorrect, incorrect. Remember, you have to do exponents next. All right, so what you have to do is this part. You have to take 1.05 to the fourth power. So let's go ahead and do that. And you really want to make sure you know how to use your calculator. You're looking for the Y to the X symbol or the caret symbol or X to the Y symbol. These are your power keys. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1.05. Then I'm going to use one of these keys, whatever the case is on your calculator. And then I'm going to plug in 4 and hit enter. And I get, this is 1,000 still, I get something like around 1.215. Okay. And there's more um, digits after that, but I'm just going to kind of round it off to that. All right. Now we can go ahead and take... 1.215 and multiply it by a principal and we will get our final amount. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we had 
That's what A equals to. So our total amount of our investment account after four years of investing, 5% compound interest with the principal starting amount of $1,000, we now have $1,215.50. So subtract that from 1,000, and you can see here we made $215, okay, and 50 cents. Now how much would we may have made if this was simple interest? Okay, so let's just figure out what 5%, 0 0.05 of times 1,000 is $50. Okay, so we would have made $50 every year, okay, for four years if this was simple interest. So it would have been $50 the first year, $50 the second year, third year, and then the fourth year. So simple interest, we would have made $200. Okay, compound interest, we made 215 But believe me, when you're dealing with larger principal amounts and longer lengths of time, your compound interest account will grow much more dramatically. So let's go ahead and wrap this up in review. Remember that compound interest grows money exponentially. Okay, It's much faster than simple interest. It's a great thing. Okay, And also, we to really understand compound interest, you need to understand investing words to apply to the formula. So when we look at these particular word problems, um, you have to understand if they don't tell you what the principle is, they might say, well, you're, you start off with a certain amount. You have to understand what these concepts mean. And uh, we'll talk about that in a various example set problems. But essentially, compound interest is so practical. Um, uh, and I can assure you, you're going to want to know this um, in your real world endeavors. So good luck to yourself, and I hope to see you in example sets.